I am determined to follow Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you don't have that determination, you will never make it. No. Because we have enemies. And the biggest enemy is the devil. And he has a lot of people on his side in our world today. And if you don't have it made up in your mind, I am going to be saved no matter what. No matter what I have to give up. No matter what I have to go through. I am determined I'm going to serve the Lord. Amen. He will never let us down. Amen. He will never let us be defeated. But we have to have a made up mind. In Acts 17, 28. For in him we live and move and have our being. That is what we have got to be. We have got to be so totally sold out to the Lord that no matter what he asks of us, we will do it. No matter how he uh, wants us to live, we will live the way he wants us to live. Our hope and our, uh, our eternal salvation depends upon being right with God. That's right. Nothing else matters. And if you don't have it made up in your mind that you want to be right, you want to follow the Lord no matter what he asks of you, you won't make it. Yes, that's it. The generation that we live in will make sure that you don't make it. The demons that are filling our air will make sure you won't make it. You have got to be totally 100% sold out yes. to God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. When you are sold out to God, you don't want your own way. You want the Lord's way. That's right. When you're sold out to God, you have confidence in Him. That no matter what you have to go through, He will be with you and He will make it easier. He will make it better. You have got to have your faith in Him. The person who has no faith will go down. You say, what can I do? Stir up your faith. Mm. Stir up your hope. Stir up your uh, the way that you look forward to your future. I, my future is not in this world. That's right. My future is with the Lord. Praise God. And you know what? You have a future that doesn't entail this world. You have a future that you are going to live. Whether it's right with God or out of God's will. You have a future, a spiritual future, that you need to safeguard. In him, we live. We have our being in him. Whatever, Lord, that you want of me, I want to be faithful. I thank you for loving me. I praise you for loving me. Because I have made up my mind. Everybody say, I have made up my mind. I have made up my mind. I am going to serve the Lord. I am going to serve the Lord. Praise God. Let's raise our hands and love you. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I love you, Jesus. I praise you. I glorify your name. Bless your word to every heart here today. And have your precious will in every life. In Jesus' name. If people of this world could know how wonderful it is to serve God. You say, well, I have trials, I have tribulation. <coughs> yes, you do. Because Jesus said we would have trials and tribulation. Right. And trials and tribulation are not fun. But our life goes beyond that. Mm. Our life is above that. Our life is in Jesus Christ, knowing that he will bring us through whatever we have to go through. He will be there, and we will be victorious. I've got my mind made up. Praise God. In Matthew 7, 13, Jesus is speaking here. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. I was sharing uh, with somebody today 
about the will of God in our lives. There is nothing more important than being in the will of God. You can get out of the will of God in what you might think is the least little thing. You can have your own way. You can stand and say, uh, I want my way on this or that or whatever it happens to be. But to get out of the will of God means that you are out of favor with God. That's right. And it puts you at a, a, a place where Satan can tempt you and try to wreck your life. As long as we keep our life in Jesus' hands, then we'll be fine. As long as we want God's will, we'll be fine. But if I get to the place where I'm going to have my way or bust, I will probably bust. Because that attitude has no place with my walk with God. I've got to have God's way. I want God's way. Yes. Lord, if I don't see your will, if I don't see your way, show me, Lord, so I can be in your way. I want to be in your will because there is no happiness outside of the will of God. Now, I'm telling you this. I have lived long enough, and I have tried at different times in my life when I was younger to have my own way. But God showed me a long time ago, it's either his will or I'll go down. Because he, you see, we are his children. He loves us. We are his children. And he expects us to be obedient to him. We're told in the Bible to be obedient to our natural parents. How much more do we need to be obedient to our Heavenly Father? He knows the end from the beginning. I, I don't know what's around the corner. I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds my hand. I know who's going to lead me through any trial, any temptation, if I stay in his will, then right. I don't have to fear anything. Yeah. Yeah. If I get out of his will, I will go down. You understand? There, there is yeah. no substitute for the will of God. I heard a preacher teach one time about the acceptable will of God. Well, if you get out of the will of God, God will allow you. You can be in the acceptable will of God. There is no such thing. I'm older now. I know better. There is no such thing as an acceptable will of God. What happens when you get out of the will? The Lord, when you repent, the Lord forgives you, but there you are out of his will. And things have got to happen in your life to bring you back into the will of God. That's right. And you're going to have more trials than what you what you bargained for. The Lord said that we would be saved with uh, trials and temptations. That's okay with me. He said we'd be saved in the middle of them. That's because I'm going to leave myself in his hands. I'm going to let him make the decisions for me. I'm going to live for him. I've got my mind made up. My feet's on the rock. Yeah. And I am going to serve God. No matter what it takes, no matter what kind of decisions I have to make, I am going to serve God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Years ago, I'm going to tell this. Uh, I was working as a nurse in Pittsfield, and I was a uh, head, head nurse for the second shift. <clears throat> One of the uh, director, the director of nursing, came to me and said, there's, my position is going to come open, and anybody who feels that they can be a director of nursing for this facility, you have this year window. At the end of a year, we have to uh, use only college graduates that's graduated a uh, bachelor degree of nursing. And so she said, I'm giving you this opportunity because I believe you can do the job. I was so elated. I went home 
it was uh, Friday, and on Saturday, we're getting ready. I was a member of the Pittsfield Church at the time, and I was living in the basement of the church. And the next morning was Sunday. I got up the next morning, song in my mind. The Lord is really blessing me, and all at once the Lord spoke to me. I want to talk to you. I said, okay, Lord, but I've got to get this kitchen ready because they use the kitchen for Sunday school. I said, I've got to get this kitchen ready, and then I'll talk with you. And it came strong again. I want to talk to you. I went in my little bathroom there in my apartment, shut the door, and I said, Jesus, I want to talk to you. I love you, Jesus. I want to talk to you. Let me get this work done, and then I will come back in here, and I will pray, and you can talk to me. So I went out. I'm getting everything all set up for Sunday school, and people started coming in, teachers, kids, and all this. And so I said, well, Lord, I'm going to go on upstairs. You can talk to me during the service. And so I started up the stairs, and the burden was so heavy. I said, Lord, what do you want? Talk to me. Go ahead and talk to me. And the Lord said, I want you to go to Wales for six months. Okay, Lord, you make the way. I'll go to Wales for six months. And, of course, that meant the job was going to go to somebody else. I said, okay, Lord. You want me to go to Wales for six months? I'll go. And the Lord came back and said, stand up and declare it. I said, Lord, I'll go, but you declare it, please. See, I'm, I'm on talking terms with the Lord, and I was definitely on talking terms with him. And so when I walked in, the, the doors at the back were swinging doors. I opened the door and went in, and a message in tongues went out. And it was interpreted by the pastor. And it said, if you will go for me, I have souls that I want to save. And if you will go for me, I will give you the words. There was more, but I don't remember it. And so when I went in, I went to the second row and I sat down and and um, in the spirit of the Lord, and all at once, the pastor says, I want Sharon to come up here behind this pulpit and say what God has been telling her. So God was talking on both ends of the line. <laughs> and so I went up there and I said, well, I feel like the Lord is getting ready to put me into active ministry again. And whatever he wants me to do, that's what I will do. I don't say anything else. I turned around, walked by the piano, and my sister was sitting on the piano, and she grabbed my arm when I went by. She said, Sharon, do you realize if you would go to Wales for six months, God would use you and save souls? I said, I do realize that. And I went on down and sat where on the second row there, and I uh, Brother Joe White said, what is it that God is asking you to do, Shannon? And I stood up and told him. I said, God is calling me to Wales for six months, and I told him I will go if he makes the way. First thing you know, hands were going to follow the congregation, and people were saying, I will give $10 a month, I'll give $20 a month, they raised all the money I needed for six months right there in that service. And yeah. so it wasn't long. That I was like 20 minutes of grace. Yeah. I was on my way to Wales. The reason I'm telling you this is it's very important that you find God's mind. Our mind is not always God's mind. Right. But he is able to talk to us and Whatever he wants, if we have that attitude, Lord, whatever you want from me, that is what I will do. I was in Wales for three weeks, 
the pastor in the capital. His sister lived in Swansea about 50 miles away. And she asked if I would be able to come and stay with her during that six months. She thought she would have her own preacher there and she would be blessed with God. She didn't know anything about God. I was there three weeks and they kicked me out. Yep. Because <laughs> they were under too much conviction. <laughs> and and so uh, I heard I heard her husband crying that night and I thought, uh oh, I'm gonna get booted out of here tomorrow. First thing you know, my bedroom door flung open and the mistress of the house said, I want you out of here in the morning. You see what you've done to my husband? And I said, yes, I, I understand. I will go in the morning. So the next morning I said, can I use your phone? I want to call her. What was that minister's name? Oh, Brother Roberts. Brother Roberts. I said, do you care if I... Uh, call Brother Roberts on your telephone. And she said, I didn't say you could use my phone. I said, well, then give me the rent back that I gave you last night for this coming month. Okay, you can use the phone. So I called Brother Roberts, and he came, and, and he told his sister, I am so ashamed of you throwing the minister of God out on the sidewalk. She said, well, when you go out, don't set the suitcases on the sidewalk because the neighbors will see I want you to put them right in the car so they don't know that I'm kicking you out. <clears throat> well, to make a long story short, there was one family that I, I don't know who else got saved. I know there was one family of five that got baptized while I was there, but the, uh, the water really hadn't been troubled during the whale ship. It was a very stiff-necked country. And, um, but when I got home after six months, I got a notice from Brother Robert's sister and husband. Please tell Sister Sharon thank you for coming and bringing the gospel. We have now received the Holy Ghost. We've been baptized in Jesus' name, and we're ready to go into rapture. Please tell her thank you. And within a year or two after I was home, they had both passed away. So I thank God. I know there was some seed that was sown. Some people were saved. But I think the biggest thing that God did for me there, he answered the prayer. I always wanted to see whales. My sister was called there, but I wasn't until then. And I wanted to see Europe so bad. And the Lord allowed me to see most of Europe, and but the thing is, he kept me from missing him. If I had become a director of nursing, I probably never would have stayed in the ministry. And so it's very important. It, it might seem like a small decision that you have to make, but whatever your decision is for this life, Always let God make the decision for you. You can ask God to move in certain ways. Lord, show me your will. Don't let me miss you. And he will answer those prayers because he wants you to be saved. And when we miss the Lord in a life transaction, it's not just a little thing. It's a big thing. So that's what I'm asking for you to do. On with my message. Have you got it made up in your mind to serve the Lord no matter what? No matter what comes against you? No matter how it looks on the outside? Are you going to serve the Lord? In Matthew 7, 14, Jesus goes on, he says, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of the false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, 
Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. What does that mean? That means be consecrated, stay consecrated, live consecrated, yes. put Jesus first oh, in your yeah. life. Yes, yes, yes. You won't make any mistakes. If you put God first in your life, you won't be making mistakes. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is cut down, hewn down, and cast into the fire. No exceptions. Either live for God or pay the price. Live for God. I would rather pay the price for living for God any day than pay the price for not living for God. Right. There is a price on each end of it. But the Lord will keep his hand upon us when we say, I am living for you, Lord. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. You cannot expect to have a good life have a happy life. You won't even be happy outside of Jesus Christ. He says, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, is going to enter in, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me, now this is important. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. I can say, I've done all of those things. I've done all of those things. But he says, then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. What does that mean? God answers faith. Do you remember when the apostles came to Jesus and said, we saw a man casting out devils and healing the sick in your name, and we forbade him because he is not with us. Jesus said, if he that is not against me is for me, don't forbid somebody from doing the work of God. Here's what the Lord has showed me in that. He answers faith. Yes. If you've got faith, you can move mountains. The reason we don't get more prayers answered? Yes. No faith. No faith. If you have faith, you can ask what you will, and God will show you his will. Praise the Lord. So, therefore, whoso, oh, I, I didn't finish that thought. How can somebody that can cast out devils and heal the sick, how can that person possibly be lost? Jesus said, I'm going to say, I never knew you. That word know is the same word that the Bible says that Joseph knew not his wife Mary until after the babe was born. That's talking about uh, marriage. That's talking about the act of marriage. You don't really know somebody. Uh, uh, when you first get married, but then after you have that first night, then you know each other. You've known each other, okay? And when he says spiritually, I never knew you, he's saying you never took time to spend an hour with me up in the spirit. You never took time to say goodbye to all the worldly pleasures of the day and, and fast and get closer to me and, and get to know me better. You say, I don't understand why fasting. I don't fast like I used to. Sometimes I fast a meal. I fast four hours or more. But I talked to another preacher about it and he said, what did you do when you were young? I said, I fasted more, more days than I ate. He said, you did, you did what God wanted you to. Your body's weaker now. You can't do what you did when you were young. And that's the truth. If you, if you expect to get closer to the Lord, you better do it while you're younger. Is that good advice? Amen. Amen. Spend time with the Lord while you're young enough that you can enjoy it without your back hurting, your feet hurting, uh, all these kind of things. Okay? Do it now. Don't put it off. It's not something that you can put off. Praise God. So Jesus said, I will profess unto them, I never knew you. 
in part from being used at work iniquity. How come people can pray for the sick and they're healed, cast out demons and they are delivered, and he still doesn't know them? Yes. I'll tell you, here, is, here it is. I don't expect you to understand because it's hard for me to understand too. It's because they have faith. God answers faith. You can use that faith to get yourself closer to God when you're praying. Some people, though, they think because they're praying for the sick and the sick are being healed, that I don't need to. I pray all the time. I've heard preachers say this. I'm praying all the time. Well, yeah, we're supposed to do that, but that's not getting down to business with God. Amen. When, when we are spending time and seeking after him and reaching up for him and saying, Jesus, I want more of you. I want to know you better. Have your way in my life. Lead me, guide me. I want to be in the spirit with you. Do you have to pray that way? Or is it just, now I lay me down to sleep. Pray the Lord, my soul, keep. Good night, Lord. Talk to you in the morning. we got to spend time with him. And you know what happens when you spend time with the Lord? You get closer and closer to him. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had siblings that you felt really close to? A mother or a father that you felt really close to you? You could confide anything to your mom or to your dad. That's the way Jesus wants to be. He wants to be closer then sticks closer than a brother. Remember that term? Yeah. Praise God. I believe you, Lord. I want you, Lord. I seek after you, Lord. That's the most important part of my life. So if we don't do that, if we don't get closer and closer, even though we have prayers answered, How's it going to be when we stand before him and he says, you didn't care. You didn't spend time with me. Oh, Lord, I prayed for the sick and they were healed. Yes, that's their experience. What about your experience with me? Okay. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. It came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Okay, praise God. We've got to have our house built upon the rock. We've got, it's all up here. It's all up here in your brain. It's all up here in your mind. Whether you're going to make it or whether you're not. If you're wishy-washy, if you are one day walking with the Lord and the next day you don't bother praying because you feel down and out. Change your way of thinking. When you feel down and out, you need to pray. Right. You don't just ignore the Lord because you feel down and out. He doesn't feel down and out. And he will lift our spirits up when we call to him. Yes, Lord, I say yes to you. You know what? Even if you don't feel like praying, you can sing. You can sing to the Lord and lift him up. And he will bring you to a place of prayer. Mm. Have you ever followed a friend in heavy traffic? Yes. Now, we don't have real heavy traffic around oh, here terrible. like St. Louis. But when you're in traffic, like six lanes on each side and, 
and some going overhead, some going under, some going through, some going this way. And you say to your friend, I want to follow you to the church. We're visiting a church of 20 miles away, and I don't know how to get there. Can I, get, can I follow you? And he says, yes, you can follow me. He goes this way, six cars over here, and you can't get over. What do you do? You go to the next exit, you take that exit, and then you can't find him, you can't find the person that you were following. You let too many cars get between you. First, right, then left. And you can't see your friend's car anymore. And you feel totally lost. In fact, you are totally lost. Mm. Following Jesus one step at a time. He never lets the traffic come between us. He never lets us get lost. We follow him and he stays with us. And some of you have been in heavy traffic and you know what it's like when you're trying to follow somebody. It's not really a good idea to follow somebody in that kind of traffic because it's a danger of having an accident too. And it's like that in the spirit. Mm. If you don't know where you're going, Jesus is an individual uh, savior. He will let you know which way to go. He will let you know when to turn, when to go straight, when to turn around and go the other way. Jesus will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He will not let us get lost. Right. Anybody that ends up lost following Jesus is because they decide to try their own way. That's right. If I, if I can go over here, I think it'll be a closer path. I can go this way and go this way and that way and I can cut off a few miles. I've done that in the natural and got lost. Yeah, yeah, way <laughs> lost. But when you're following Jesus, he won't let you get lost. You follow him one step at a time and you make the turns correctly and you use the spiritual effort to find his will. Nobody needs to be lost. That's right. Find his will and walk in it. Don't look back. Yes, Lord, I'm following you one step at a time because I've got it made up in my mind. I am going to be saved. Yes, yeah. amen.